Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I'm Trace. This is episode 5 of 5 in our series on alternative energy sources. Make sure you check out the other four episodes first. Or if you don't want to do that, just stick around. It's going to be awesome. Because we're going to talk about alternative energy. The most craziest of the alternative energies. Obviously, we want to move away from using oil. Those fossil fuels are damaging our environment. They're damaging our planet. They are damaging us. And we mentioned some great alternative energy sources earlier. But the ones that we mention all the time, solar and wind, those are popular. They're cool. And they're easy for people to understand because they've had a lot of press explaining what those things do. But there are other ways to generate electricity other than solar and wind and nuclear, of course. For example, geothermal power. It's very, very popular in some parts of the world, especially in places that are volcanically based like Iceland. But the problem is you can't always use those things in places that don't have volcanic activity. How geothermal works is it uses the heat energy of the Earth to generate electricity. Just really quick, Power Plants 101. All of our power plants basically use mechanical energy to generate electricity. So a wind turbine is being turned by the wind. A water turbine or a hydroelectric dam is being turned by the water. Coal power plants, steam is their main thing, which is turning that turbine. Nuclear is the same. Geothermal is the same. They're all using heat or something to turn a turbine. We could also have floating windmills. Right now you picture a windmill, it's a big post with like an airplane-y looking thing at the top, looks like a big pinwheel. And as the wind moves by, it turns that turbine. Why do they have to be anchored on the ground? What if we built a giant blimp, but inside of it, it was like a cylinder, and we could put one of those three rotor blades right in the middle? Those floating windmills have already been thought up, and they're already starting to be built. They rise a thousand feet off the ground, and they're connected via very high strength tethers that run the electricity from a thousand feet in the air all the way back down to the ground. The advantages of these floating windmills is one, they're not attached to the ground. A lot of people complain about wind power, you know, killing birds or creating noise pollution because they do make that kind of sound. I've stood next to them, it can get kind of loud. But Birds only fly about 500 feet in the air, so 1,000 feet in the air, you are limiting that problem. You can put them over water, and when you get that high up in the air, wind speeds are two to three times higher. And computers on board can bring down the blimp if wind speeds tend to get too high or a storm setting in. So you're talking about a thing that can generate electricity and kind of is smart enough to not hurt birds, not cause noise pollution, and protect itself in case of conditions that don't work. It's just a floating version of the standard wind power system, but it can be done over water, it can be done on land, and it's kind of out of the way. Another way that we can generate crazy amounts of energy is microwave transmitting solar satellites. This one's a little bit of a mind blow, but essentially it's solar panels on satellites in space. So instead of taking a solar panel and putting it in a desert somewhere where it's a sunny a lot, we're going to put it in space where it's always sunny. It's always sunny in space, not Philadelphia, literally in space. They put it 35,000 kilometers away from Earth, and they park it there. Then the sun, sending all of its energy out, doesn't get blocked by Earth's atmosphere. About a third of solar energy is reflected back into space from our atmosphere, so we already have that benefit. Every hour, though, more solar energy reaches Earth than humans could even use in a year. So if we're sitting in space, we're collecting so much more energy. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do you get that energy back to the ground? You can't just attach a big tether and, you know, plug it in. It's a little more complicated than that. There are giant radiation systems on the satellite and on the ground, and they're pointed directly at each other. Now, what happens is those microwaves hit each other, and transmit that power from one place to another. Think of it like your wireless charging systems now, but over a significantly greater distance. There's a lot of power loss there, but you're already gaining so much by being in space that it's possible. The big drawback of this guy is it's really, really expensive. <laughs> Production costs tens of billions of dollars. And I mean, launching rockets is expensive. To launch a pound is like $1,000 or something. So considering the distance of these satellites and the amount of money it would take to launch them, it's a pretty 
unlikely scenario, but the amount of electricity that we could produce from this system is, is insane. And just for perspective, these satellites are 35,000 kilometers out there. The ISS, the International Space Station, it's only 250 kilometers up. So these are really far out there. So another alternative energy source that gets some press, akin to solar and wind, but uses a slightly different medium, a slightly different fluid, is wave-powered energy, tide-powered energy gathering. Again, we're turning turbines or we're moving things to create energy. 70% of the Earth's surface is water. So if we were to harvest the movement of that water around the Earth, it's constantly moving, we could produce 80,000 terawatt hours of electricity per year. That's five times the amount that we would need to meet everybody on the Earth's global energy use. And it works a lot of different ways. The main ways are these three. Oscillating water column, OWC, works a lot like a piston in a cylinder. The waves rise inside the column and that pushes air up through the turbine. When the wave recedes, air is sucked back, passing through the turbine again and back into the column. So it's just a piston of water moving up and down, turning the turbine. There's the surface following attenuator, also known as a line absorber, which looks like a giant sea snake. This one is my favorite because it's just so weird. And it just sits there in the wave, and as the wave moves, it kind of flexes. And that flexing, the moving of up and down, generates electricity. There's the buoyancy unit, which are buoys attached to the bottom of the ocean. So when the waves move up and down, those buoys then generate pumps to make electricity. So these are three different ways that we can generate power from waves. Now, all three of these could be used in the same place at the same time. Something that you need to realize when it comes to wind power and wave power and some of these other things is we're never going to cool off the earth with geothermal energy. We're never going to stop the waves by harvesting energy from them. We're never going to slow down the wind by trying to put resistance on it with these turbines. Nothing that we can do is going to stop this amount of energy that's going to be floating around our planet all the time. We just have to learn to harvest it. And that's where some of the even smaller projects can come in. For example, inmates in Brazil can reduce their sentence by riding stationary bikes that are attached to car batteries. And those car batteries are then used to power street lamps in the local plaza. 14 bicycles require 10 hours of pedaling, charges one battery, enough to power 10 street lamps. Pretty awesome. This is energy that we just have. People can create their own energy. You don't have to be in prison to do this. You can do this at home. You can also recharge your cell phone by breathing using something called, I think it's piezoelectricity. You can check me on that, uh, listeners. And that's just an idea right now, but essentially you're recharging your cell phone by breathing. The movement of your body is recharging things. So this guy, Jean Paulo Lamoglia, he created an industrial concept design in 2011 that won an award. It's not real yet, but it's gonna be. And essentially, you get a face mask, and you can wear it around, and the face mask converts individual breaths into electrical energy. Now, he got the idea from watching kids blow on pinwheels, because when you blow on a pinwheel, it spins a turbine. Sounds familiar? because you can generate energy from that. On top of that, there are dozens and dozens of other ways we can generate energy. You could put things under the road and as cars drive over them, that movement can generate energy. You can put things in your clothing and as you walk around, it generates tiny pieces of energy. You can even put patches on your skin that when you move them, it generates electricity. People have tried so many things in order to get electricity out of our environment. You can take dog poop and you can use that to create energy. The feces of dog poop has methane that can be used like natural gas. Microorganisms in the poop give off the methane, and it's a byproduct of that that can be used to power lights. You can use sugar and turn that into hydrogen, which can be used in fuel cell technology. You can also use dead human bodies to generate electricity. You know, we can use ourselves. A crematorium in the UK got an idea. After an environmental review came out, that said crematorium chimneys were releasing too much smoke into the air, they found a way to use the gases released from the cremation process to heat things. And heating, that's just another form of energy generation. So weird, so cool. My favorite of all of these is geothermal, but I don't live in Iceland, so it's kind of difficult to get. But what's your favorite? 
If you had a way to generate electricity that you could just make up right now, <laughs> why don't you tell us in the comments? Or one of these, or one that I didn't mention. Tell us about that down in the comments as well. Thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus. Hopefully you watched all five of our episodes on alternative energies. If you did, tell us about it down in the comments. What did you think of this series? Do you have an idea for another one? You can also come find me on Twitter and tell me there. I'm at Trace Dominguez, or you can find the network as a whole at Test Tube. So make sure you come back tomorrow for more Test Tube Plus, and I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Wow.